Guess what, girls? You're getting your chicken tractor today. <laughs> Come here. Nah. They're so sassy sometimes. Hello, friends. Welcome to my channel, Creating Essence. I am Megan. Those are the girls. I'm so glad you're here today, because guess what? We're building a chicken tractor. I'm a hot, sweaty mess. It's a hot, humid day, and we're doing a project. We are doing the John Siskovich style stress-free chicken tractor. I'm really excited. I have been researching chicken tractors for a very long time. And that is the one that we landed on because that's just what we wanted to go with. Disclaimer here, we are absolute building novices. My husband and I did not learn these sorts of skills growing up, but they are things that we really want to learn. We know they're valuable skills to have, and we just want to become more self-sufficient, and this is the next step. So, we are not professionals. We're gonna mess up a lot, but we're gonna learn something new. Hi. <gasps> hey, baby. How are you? That's your foot. Yeah, that's a nice foot. Is there anything else in the car, babe? Yeah, four more of the long ones. Okay. We've accumulated all the supplies to make it. I have my PDF book here. We're just gonna go step by step, and he does an awesome job. You see that? Step by step instructions, every single bit. And he outlines every supply you need and why he chose that. So that is a really key thing since we are brand new for why we decided to go with this design. <laughs> is that we bought brand new power tools that we don't know how to use so there's like mountain sized learning curve going on here but we're learning so that's good fun twist I do believe the speed square we bought was uh, returned yep because uh, there's tape on the inside and the apparent bolts for it are in a sandwich bag. Something tells me Swanson does not put their official parts in a dollar store sandwich bag. Here's to hoping everything's there. We have made all the cuts to get started. And I was really excited. I was like, great, we're making progress. And then I turned the page and I was like, oh, um, half lap joints actually look a lot harder than they sounded. So now we're to that point. I mean, maybe they're super easy. They don't look easy. They just look detailed. And I am... Um, inexperienced but I'm gonna pretend this is gonna help me Mucho.
we have successfully acquired a new skill, aside from working with our circular saw. It fits. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did half lap joinery. Right, guys it is around 9 30 at night we are calling it quits for tonight it's a huge mess <laughs> thankfully there's no rain predicted for tonight so we took all the tools and things inside and we're leaving the framing out here we have all the pieces put together we just have to put them all together tomorrow so pieces are ready need to assemble. Javi's having some back spasms, so he has to go lay down. So far, the design is going pretty well. Um, there are some aspects of this design that are so thorough and detailed, which I super duper appreciate. On the frame of the door, uh, it, I don't know if it was like a mistake with the diagram or what, but it's not like typed out the steps it's just pictures kind of like uh, Ikea furniture assembly type just for that one specific part and it was it was tough trying to figure out what to do and because what was on the picture if we had done it that way with the door frame the door itself wouldn't have fit in so we we made it work I'm pretty confident that what we did is going to work very well and it's going to be strong so, um, yeah, I hope, I mean, when we show you guys the whole thing at the end, I can show you exactly what I mean about, uh, the differences in the diagram and what, uh, how it would have worked. But yeah, that's all for tonight. And we will pick this back up in the morning. Thankfully, hubby works from home tomorrow, so he doesn't have to worry about getting dressed in a commute. But before he has to log on for work, we're going to come out here and get this all assembled. So... Hopefully by tomorrow lunchtime, um, I'm able to get it all finished up after he helps me finish the framing and we will have chickies in their chicken tractor. Good Monday morning, friends. The sun is bright and only minimal chance of rain today. So we're gonna get going on the chicken tractor. We also woke up to no water. No pressure in the well pump in the uh, lean to so is working on that and I'm gonna get started on some little things that I can do on my own and I'll show you what's first this is gonna be the front door we don't have the sides attached yet we just have the sides all each piece individually assembled and they just need to be put together a problem that we ran into was that the diagram showed bracing crosswise right here and crosswise right here on the frame. The problem with that is that then the door, the rectangular door, doesn't fit in here. Also there's a piece cut out for the door or for the frame for the bottom, but there's already that. It doesn't show that you should put it like this or behind and if you put it here, if you connected these two and put it on here, it would be too high for the rest of the measurements to work together. So it really was unclear on how to build this frame. And the door was uh, written exactly the same way and was a little confusing, but 
we made it work, we looked ahead, saw what kind of dimensions we were working with with other aspects, so we just kind of left out this piece of wood for the bottom of the front frame. I don't know if that's going to bite us in the butt later, but I don't think so. We will see. I may regret saying this. So we have the frame up. Instead of doing cross bracing, we used scrap and did additional bracing here and here. So I hope that works well for the frame. And this is the back portion. That's one side, not attached yet, just leaning there. And that is another one. Yes, it is a giant mess out here. <laughs> giant mess. We're kind of mid-project and I don't think that's ever really clean. One thing we do need to do is shave down the door pieces just a smidge because um, my cuts apparently weren't precision because somehow, even though my cuts for the door themselves are perfect and measuring perfect, they are about a quarter inch too big to fit in the door frame. And nothing about what we dealt with trying to sort things last night would have changed that. If we had bumped it up and made it taller using that bottom piece, then it, they would have been way too short to fit in that opening. So I think somewhere with my cuts for the frame and the front pieces, things were just a smidge off enough that I need to shave about a quarter inch off those door pieces. All right, the door is done. It looks good. It fits neatly inside the frame with a little space on either side. The hinges are on, hooray. Now I get to play with this and figure this out. I have never seen nor worked with a conduit bender in my life. So, let's see if people can just build something like this with uh, logic and the ability to read because that's kind of what my husband and I are going on. <laughs> We are making great progress. I honestly am not sure what time it is. We've got all the frame put together, getting the chicken wire put on. We've got the two panels here. We were working on the back panel and the staple gun broke. So we are on our way to get a new staple gun because we have to have one. Um, the plumbers came, the water's fixed, the, uh, some switch blew. I don't know. We have water again. Tastes a little funny till we get soda ash in the system. The repairmen did not have soda ash on their truck. They usually carry it. That's who we get it from. But I'm headed to Walmart because we need diapers for Saul and a couple of other little things. And oh, and we ran out of zip ties zip ties. So we are going to get diapers and some other household things and check for soda ash and zip ties. So I watched a lot of videos before we chose this uh, design. Trying to get a feel for other people who had done it and like how beginner friendly it was and what kind of time commitment the build was. The general consensus was excellent instructions, very beginner friendly with basic tools and with two people working together it's a three to four hour build. I will give you that on the thorough instructions. I think this is an excellent design. I think John Siskovich really uh, 
really did his work on this. But we are like complete greenhorns with the building and kind of with the power tools thing. Um, we started this 24 hours ago and aside from a brief break to sleep, we didn't eat breakfast. We fed the kids leftover muffins, so I didn't even make them breakfast. Um, that jaunt to Walmart, and we're just finishing up a break for lunch. We've been working on this for 24 hours. We've had a solid, I would say 10 hours sunk into this so far, and we're not done. We're just following instructions, and every time I look at what we've just accomplished said, oh, we're almost done. Then I look over at the pile of equipment still to be used, like the pile of supplies still to be used, and I'm like, oh, where does that go? Oh, we're not almost done. There are a few more steps. I don't at all regret choosing this design. It's just kind of turning into the chicken tractor build that never ends. Oh, and the fridge broke. It's freezing everything, no matter what we do. And there are a couple of, uh, like the lights inside won't work, no matter what it, uh, like we replace the bulbs and stuff, which tells me it's an electrical issue. So, this is the year of replacing appliances. But, realized when I put the door together earlier that I, uh, put the hinge on in a spot where in the whole five foot side of the door it was the one three and a half inch spot where it couldn't go and I put a hinge there so I'm gonna take that off move it down three and a half inches and then continue just a brief little update on what it looks like right now yes it is a mess. It is an absolute nightmare out here. But, ooh, it's looking good. It's done. Whew, finally. About 14 actual working hours. Yep. Yeah. Boy, this is hard to unlock. Well, you're not supposed to be able to unlock it. There we go. There we go. So I followed the advice of Jake from White House on the Hill, got a larger tarp so that it can be winterized because John Siskovich only uses his for summer um, raising. So as you can see, we have some folded up here and come winter we can pull that out and zip tie the ends together down the middle like a zipper. Hi buddy. And the same, you can see those are all folded up so we'll be able to cover the sides as well. So it will be a nice little winterized chicken tractor. The one thing I mentioned that didn't make sense was that it said to put a support frame across here on this portion and on the door. And I don't know if we were reading instructions wrong or what, but it did not make sense and the door would not actually fit in the frame if we did that. So we didn't. We do have this little gap here, but we have another plank this size, exactly this size, that fits perfectly between the conduit and this. And we're going to zip tie that into place. And we're going to put the name of our chicken tractor up there, which I'm sure you'll see in the future. We're gonna paint that tonight. So, because the Stress-Free Chicken Tractor by John Siskovich is written for broilers. Uh, and we are doing ours for layers. I put in a different kind of feeder here, um, hanging it from the crossbars of the conduit. We did make the chicken waterer with the nipples under there. And that is a food grade bucket with a lid. And we put in a roosting bar. We tacked it down there. It's just a two by two by eight. These are the laying box, the laying boxes. 
These I took a hint from Rose and Ryan over at Wholesome Roots. They use these old Tidy Cats buckets. They said this lip here is perfect for a laying box and it keeps them from kicking out the bedding and the, it's just the best thing they've found. They really, really like it. So I added this extra, it's a bit of frame attached there and attached there and then it works perfectly with the roosting bar. They're all in their new home. One's on the roosting bar, but it fell. One is on the roosting bar. Hello, girls. What do you think? Oh, they love it. They found the food. That we'll see if they find the chicken nipples, how long it takes them to find those. I'm going to get their uh, baby waterer, the little chick waterer and put it underneath that one so they get used to that area for water and hopefully curiosity gets them to uh, peck at those chicken nipples. We're gonna leave you to uh, exploring your new home. That is it for today, friends. Our chicken tractor that has been three years in the dreaming is built. I am so excited. It has been exhausting, uh, huge, huge learning curve and mentally exhausting honestly I'm just whooped from uh, the building stuff which I have always wanted to expand my abilities and knowledge as far as building so I was really excited for this project it was very mentally exhausting but I am excited that it is done and we can do more in the future. I cannot even express how excited I am about this. We have 20 chickens. We have a chicken tractor. Awesome, like this is truly a dream come true and an enormous check off our list. In total, the John Siskovich Stress-Free Chicken Tractor is a great design. I really loved the design. I love how easy it was even for an absolute noob like me to modify for layers. Um, I think if you had a good working knowledge of your own power tools and any concept of how to build something, this would not have been exhausting or as take as long as it took us. But Josh and I are both really happy with it in the end. We feel like it was worth it. And we are really, we're both really proud of the skills that we built doing this. So thank you so much for coming along with us today. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. If you want to see, uh, <laughs> better how-to's on chicken tractors and things. Uh, Jake and Becky at White House on the Hill built a whole army of these. They have some awesome uh, build with me videos and modification videos. There are so many homesteaders out there that have done awesome little chicken tractor builds like Al at Lumna Acres. Um, he has several designs like his New York City and his 30 minute chicken tractor. Rose and Ryan over at Wholesome Roots did a few. Really, if you Google chicken tractors or chicken tractor designs or anything like that, you're gonna come up with so many hits. We love this design. I do highly recommend it. Red Tool House also did the, uh, does the st stress-free chicken tractors and they did a review of it. So there are lots of more experienced people who have done these and will uh, give you more in-depth information than this uh, absolute amateur little build. But thank you so much for sticking around. Subscribe to our channel for more videos like this and share this for anyone else who needs a laugh. Bye-bye, friends. Bye.